evening, everybody, and welcome back to Fujit Blitz. And we're looking at the T28 HTC, the American Tier 7 TD. It's a premium tank, and it's currently in the stores. Now, is it worth it? Well, this is not the first time the tanks come round. And to be honest with you, it's an interesting type of tank. It's not your stereotypical TD. And it's also not the easiest of tanks to get on with. In fact, it doesn't get on with most of the maps. Let's have a look at it, though. Damage-wise, not too bad. Not spectacular. Rate of fire, pretty slow. Penetration, pretty good. Armor on it is pretty thick. Well, what about its hit points? Well, it's got 1,200 hit points. The front of it is pretty solid. And the sides and the rear are pretty weak. Now, it's got mediocre view range not bad concealment just above average fire wise wow it's got a dpm of 2283 but a reload time of just over eight seconds it will pen 190 mil on its ap 235 was apcr Average damage, well, you're knocking out about 310 IN Alpha with the AP, 260 APCR, and 400 with its HE. It's got an aim time of 3.5 seconds. It's got pretty pants gun elevation, uh, gun depression. In fact, it's not pants, it's shit. Four degrees. It's absolutely awful. But it's got absolutely spectacular traverse left and right. 30 degrees is pretty loads for a turretless TD. Speed-wise, well, it's actually quite maneuverable. You'll get 26 average speed out of this, although it is a bit of a heavy beast. But what about the tank? Well, there it is. It's very squat and spidery. Uh, as I said, it's a turretless TD. The armour on the front is not too bad. I mean, this is the beast in all its glory, and, uh, you know, this tank never existed. It was a concept. That's all it is. Armour profile, though. I mean, look at the four degrees on that. But the thing that does this is look at the traverse on the gun. I mean, three de 30 degrees is a lot for a turretless TD. It really, really is. I mean, in here you see it again. I mean... And look at that. I mean, it's right over the fenders, left and right. That is a wide arc. Yes, indeed it is. I mean, not many TDs have such an arc. Well, let's have a look at the armour. Well, as you can see, it, when in the profile, it looks pretty solid front on. But uh, it's deceptive, as you'll see when I put it in the penetration armour. Sides and back, as we know, are pretty thin. Frontally... Like I said, it looks pretty solid. Let's have a look at the penetration. Whoa, look at that. The problem is, frontally, yes, it is solid. But you've got these stupid machine gun turrets left and right, which are wide open. And as you can see there, a well-aimed shot is just going to pen them and go through them. The other thing you'll notice, as you move the gun traverse, it opens up areas of weakness in the armor which are really easy to pen what's it like in the game well it's not too bad like i said mobility is quite good the gun itself is pretty nice you know okay it's got a longish reload but nothing to write home about i mean it's a td guys and you're doing you know eight seconds oh ammo rack gotta love an ammo rack and this is the thing about this tank. I mean, the traverse really is spectacular. It's not a great side scraper because of those bulbous, stupid machine gun lugs either side. Because they're easy to pen. But you can side scrape it, as I'm going to show you now. I mean, it, it, it does work. And, you know, the aim time's not too bad. It's a pretty accurate gun. And because of that traverse, I mean, look at this, you know. It, you can you can actually stick it behind a corner and traverse the gun round. That is something spectacular. You've got to be careful, though, guys, because if anything comes around the back, you're doomed. I mean, look at this. Look at the traverse. Boom. 30 degrees is really nice. It's, it is actually very nice because you can sort of hide behind cover and just traverse the gun. And it's not like having a turret because, you know, it, it's the front of this thing is the thing that sets it on fire. 
damage wise as I said, you're knocking out about 300 iron now for I mean it, it's nice it's not setting the world on fire but it is nice you'll pen most things in the tier tier 7 and tier 6 mm, okay sometimes it struggles with tier 8 but not really I mean the penetration value is pretty good and there's, there's a KB2 and boom knock 260 odd into the KB2 pretty straightforward um, you know, because of the low profile, I can get behind this carcass of a tank and it basically get away with it. Unfortunately, the KV-2 and the Smasher are not presenting, so I'm going to have to move anyway. But this is the thing. I mean, this tank is not a slow, lumbering beast of a TD. It's got decent mobility. And as long as the targets are in front of you, you're going to have a whale of a time. I mean, I've set the KV-2 on fire. He's low-rolled me. I'm assuming he hit me with HE. Now there's the smasher. Smash him into the side. Uh, and this is what you can do. And look at the angle I've got the tank on. I'm using the traverse of the gun to sort of angle out to the tank because I know that once I turn that gun, those, those flappy bits inside the sort of gun mantlet are easy to pen. The biggest downside, as I said, to this tank is those lugs of the machine gun ports left and right of the fixed casemate. And the LTTB here, in, in a moment, is going to show how easy they are to pen. And they are very easy to pen. I mean, they are wide open. And that's the downside to this tank. I mean, frontally, it looks solid, apart from those looks which do stick out like a sore thumb and as i say i mean the LTTB in this game is going to give me a really hard time it's just going to keep penning those looks and whittle down my hit points and there's not a thing i can do about it unfortunately now it's two against three so we're hard pressed anyway to win this game um unfortunately the, the gun depression of four degrees is a killer in this thing it has absolutely no gun depression, none at all. And that that's a shame because the, the basically the reason being is because obviously the gun, whilst it looks like it's sat forward, it's not. It's like this flat part of the hull that stops it. Um, but not, you know, like I said, the gun's pretty accurate when it's on flat surfaces. Don't even try to, to sort of sneak and peep over a hill with this thing because four degrees is just going to kill you simple as that but the traverse of 30 degrees is brilliant look at this boom i mean i, I wasn't even looking at it. you know my my the front of the tank was not even pointing at that shirt of uh, that firefly before i smacked him now we're down to two against one and it's the lttb who's played a corking game to be fair um the problem is there's a tiger p and there's me and an LTTB, and I'm sorry it jumps a bit. Uh, the replays are not particularly great at the moment for some reason when you re-record them through Wargaming. Um, they're a bit laggy. Anyway, the LTTB in real terms could now give us the runaround, and he sort of does to, a, to an extent, but not as much as he'd like to or could have done. I mean... I'm not going to chase down an LTTB in this thing. It's just not going to be possible. So we've got to do our best of going left and right to try and sandwich him to, to get him out of the game. Now, the Tiger P had already told me, oh, go and cap the base. Well, look at that. Why would I cap the base when there's only one tank left? And the chances are we can get him if we play our cards right. And when I say that, we've, we've, got, to, we've got to play the game properly. We, we've got to sort of force him to make a mistake and that's exactly what he does so he goes down into the base type area moves out the base now he's got a choice and he makes the wrong choice and the reason he makes the wrong choice is well, firstly the tiger p smacks him he knows that the tiger p is on a, on a quickish reload but now he's going for shots and that was the wrong choice. He should have got himself over to the other side of the map. And if he would have done that, then chances are he may not have won the game, but it would have been a draw. 
Now, I drop down, I'm going to load HE, he's a one-shot, and he's now TTB. And watch this, bounce! What the hell was that? Anyway, Tiger P takes him out, we win the game. I do 2,200 odd damage, bounce 100 odd something, that's not too bad, almost 2,300 damage. And we get a nice medal. Then we I decided, well, okay, let's see what this tank is like if you play it ultra aggressively. So here we are rolling out on Oasis Palms. I decided to play this one ultra aggressively. Now I can see most of the enemy team are there, at least four of them. So we're going to just roll up and we're just going to keep rolling up. The SU, oh sorry, the ISU uh, has just smacked me for a shed load of HP. But not to worry, he's on a reload now, and now I'm going to move it. Oh, another ammo rack. Ammo rack city today. So I'm just going to roll in, and I'm just going to really give this AMX a hard time. I know he cannot pen me unless he goes for those side lugs. And he's not. He's just trying to hit me front on. He's gone. I didn't take the kill, unfortunately, but I gave him a hard time. Look at the gun depression. There is none. No. So now I'm going to give the SU a hard time. Um, again, he's not aiming for my lugs. I'm going to try and wiggle and try and keep him away from those lugs as much as possible. Turn the gun, close that traverse gun mantlet to keep those uh, areas down, and he's gone. Next is the KV. He's aiming for those lugs. You can see that. I'm trying to angle up. Doesn't work. But, uh, you know, he smacks me, but I smack him back. He's now one shot to... to, to a few people on the battlefield, somebody takes a little bit out of him, I go in, take the kill. Now I know the ISU is chasing me down. My traverse is not the best, so I've got to try and spin round and bounce him. I managed to get a shot in, and he misses. Or did he bounce? I don't know. But then again, somebody takes him out. 2,000 odd damage, 1,200 odd bounced. That is playing the tank aggressively, and playing it aggressively, you can still get some good results. So I thought, well, I'll try that again. Let's try some more aggressive tactics, this time on Black Goldville. Now, like I said at the beginning of, of this video, not every map is suitable for this tank, unfortunately. And um, there are a lot, I mean, look at this. <laughs> <laughs> Fair play to the victory. If you're going to YOLO, YOLO. Um, and he did. So I'm now just, I'm not going to stop. Well, I am to, to aim, but I'm just going to keep plowing straight through. The intention I had in this game was to be aggressive, just like the last game. And you can see, you know, the aim time is not the best. But you can get a lot of bounces off this thing, especially if they're just aiming for the lower hatch. Now, with the Traverse, I'm closing that uh, casemate. They've got nothing really to aim at. This gives me, I, you know, ideal opportunities to bounce and get targets. I'm not interested in the T-34. The rest of the team can take him. I'll take the VK. He's wearing it away. T-34-85 is gone. So we've got rid of three tanks in next to no time. And now we've got a Black Prince there. And then an IS-2 pops up. Let's give him a smack. Get a high roll over 300. That was nice. Black Prince is there. Oh, there's an SU. The IS is backing off. He's on a long reload. Nothing's presenting apart from the SU. Presents his side. Smack him. Now, our SU is going to go up there and just waste him. Brilliant. Now, that's four tanks gone. Five tanks gone. The IS is now gone. Now we can push on the Black Prince. There's only two tanks left. We've got full hit points here. Our team is looking in a good position. I've taken two kills. I've done over 2,000 damage. Um, don't know which way the BP is going to go. So I'm going to go this way. I'm going to track him. I didn't pen him, unfortunately. L put, put, give him a bit of a bump. He's not focused me. Face on. Smack him in the turret. Job done. Now, it's not a bad tank to be honest with you. It's not spectacular. It doesn't suit every map. Now, it's currently going in the store in two packages. You can get it as a standalone tank with an avatar, 
and a garage slot for 6,000 gold, which isn't too bad. Or you can get the two for one package, which is this tank and the T-34 Sheriff, which is basically the T-34 Independence, which is basically the T-34 1776 for 10,000 gold. Now, you do get a saving there because if you buy the two tanks separately, it's going to cost you basically 13,600 gold. Whereas if you buy them as a package, you get two tanks for 10,000. If you go to sell the tank at a later date, the Wargaming are going to give you just shy of a million credits. You won't get gold back, unfortunately. And that works out to about 2,800 gold. Near as damn it, give or take. Now, this tank isn't for everybody, I, I get that, but it's got some good things going for it. It's got good traverse, it, mediocre armor, pretty good damage, nice reload, and good mobility. It brings something a little bit different to tier 7. Anyway, that's been the T28 HTC, or the concept. I've been Fujit. It's in the stores now for 6,000 gold, which is not a bad price in real terms. If you haven't got this tank, or when you're thinking of something a bit different for, as for a TD at this tier, it's worth a look. I'm not going to tell you to buy it, it's your call, but you could do worse. You're not going to get it with equipment, though, no. remember that. Anyway... If you've got any decent replays, by all means, send them to me, fujitsblitz at gmail.com. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do. And I'd love to hear your comments and stuff in the write-up below. Until then, um, if you haven't subscribed yet, as I said, please do. Then you can take part in my gold giveaway competition, which is running throughout July. The details which are at the end of this video. And with that, I will say, stay safe out there, have fun on the battlefield, and happy tanking. Because that's what it's all about, having fun and being happy.